So this video is going to show the proper application of DuraPrep solution that we use very commonly in the operating room. We like it because it has two agents that work to kill the microbes. We have our iodine, which provides the resistance throughout the case, so we have it to kill the spores. And then we also have the alcohol, which provides the quick kill uh, on contact. And then it also has that sticky substance, which resists removal during the procedure as well. Now, DuraPrep is made by 3M. We do have a few other agents that are made by different companies that are slightly different in their makeup than the DuraPrep is, but they're gonna be very similar. So we have Prevail, which is more of a gel than the DuraPrep is, and then Prevail FX as well, which these are both made by Cardinal, but you may see these in your facilities. They're gonna be applied very similar in a very similar fa fashion to DuraPrep, but they're not exactly the same. They are made by different companies, but they are applied in the exact same manner. To apply DuraPrep, it does come in a sterile package, so if it did ever have to be open to you as a sterile person, you would just grab it out of the package, making sure not to touch the laminated edges. But when you open it up, you wanna make sure that you don't allow the applicator sponge to touch the outside laminated edge because that will be the portion that comes into contact with the sterile prepped area or the tips of the cotton tip applicators. Now, since we personally with our hands are not going to be touching the prepped area, we don't have to wear sterile gloves. A lot of people will wear exam gloves just to avoid getting the DuraPrep on their hands, but um, we don't actually have to wear sterile gloves because we're not gonna be putting our hands on the sterile prepped area. So when you pick this up, make sure you don't touch the applicator sponge. You want to pick it up, hold it so that the applicator sponge is down, and then push down on the back end of it so that it breaks the ampule of fluid on the inside. Allow the fluid to run down. You want it to saturate the sponge and then run down below this level here where this line is. You're going to see it start to saturate the sponge as well. You're going to pick up your cotton tip applicators. Again, making sure that you don't touch the tips because that's the portion that we're going to use to prep the umbilicus. You're going to squeeze a little bit of that prep solution out into the umbilicus and then use those cotton tip applicators to prep your umbilicus. Remember the umbilicus is the most contaminated area on your abdominal prep. On abdominal preps we prep it first even though in general we prep contaminated areas last but we don't want anything running out over the sterile prep abdomen. Now, remember that DuraPrep is highly flammable and anything that is saturated with the prep solution needs to be taken out of the room after the prep. So make sure you put those back into the packaging so they can be taken out of the room. Don't throw them away in the trash. After we prep the umbilicus, then we're gonna start at the incision site and start to work our way outward towards the periphery. And it's just one thin coat. So you're not gonna take and push down with the applicator. You just need to make sure that you're covering all of the surface area. So just overlapping lines, making sure that you're covering all of the areas. There's no scrubbing motion that's with it. And once you get out to the periphery, you're not gonna come back up. If you missed a portion of the prepped area that's closer to the incision site, you would need to open a new applicator and then prep that area that is closer to the incision site. Once you get out to the periphery of the area that needs to be prepped, you then take the applicator and any soaked prep pads or linen or anything else that might have the prep solution outside the operating room. So we usually place it back in the packaging and then take the whole thing out of the OR along with any linen or prep pads. Then we need to wait at least three minutes on hairless skin prior to application of the drapes. So remember, three minutes is the dry time. That's just a minimum. Remember, it's just gonna turn from a shiny to a dull appearance. If it still looks shiny at the end of three minutes, you should wait even longer to put the drapes on because that means it's not dry. If it's not dry, it's highly flammable and could be ignited by a heat source during the operation. Remember, it can take up to an hour to dry in hair, so we want to avoid getting it into the hair if at all possible. Now, oh yeah, we also remember then at the end of the case, DuraPrep has to be removed with DuraPrep remover. It can't be removed with the soap and the water. So DuraPrep remover will either come in a bottle or sometimes it comes in the single use packets as well. So at the end of the case, you're gonna have your under pair of gloves on a lot of times or you'll have a pair of exam gloves on. So you'll grab your bottle of DuraPrep remover or your single use packet. And all you're gonna do is just take some of the remover. Remember that you already would have your bottom sterile layer of your dressing on, but it's not gonna be secured with the outer layer of the tape. 
but you would have just that bottom sterile layer on and then we want to clean the patient's skin off prior to placing that outer layer. You're going to squirt that remover onto the patient's skin and then you just take your gloved hands, rub it into the patient's skin, and then take a towel and wipe it off. And it's going to take the lotion and then the DuraPrep with it as well. Remember, we really do try to take the DuraPrep off the patients. It's very confusing to them when they get home and they try to wash the DuraPrep off with soap and water and they're unable to remove it. So it is very important that you take that off so that they are not confused by why they can't get that off their skin upon returning home.